Vsauce, I'm Jake and- Hey, T Jake. National Geographic called, and they were wondering if you, me, and Kevin could each make a video about Mars. But Michael, why Mars? Throughout our lives, there has been a fascination, an expectation to physically go to Mars. And it isn't specific to one culture or one era, it permeates through us. This idea of visiting the red planet, given that name because of the iron oxide on its surface. It has been a part of culture for a very long time. In literature all the way back to the 1600s. In film in 1910 with the Thomas Edison produced A Trip to Mars, one of the first science fiction movies ever made. And more recently in video games like Doom, Red Faction, and Destiny. And of course on television in the series Mars on National Geographic. In reality, we've been coming up with plans to go to that bright spot in the sky that at its closest is 33.9 million miles away, and at its farthest, 249 million miles away, for over 65 years. The first being the Mars Project, written by physicist and engineer Werner von Braun in 1948. It detailed and outlined how to get a manned mission to Mars. His hope was that it could be done by 1965, four years before the moon landing. Since the publication of the Mars Project, there have been over 60 other plans by government organizations and scientists to get human beings on the surface of the planet. During all those years, we have sent landers and rovers to Mars. First, the Soviet Union sent Mars 2 and Mars 3. Neither were successful, with Mars 2 holding the title of being the first man-made object on the surface of Mars, and simultaneously the first man-made object to crash into the surface of Mars. Then there was the Viking 1 lander in 1976, which was not only the first spacecraft to actually land on Mars and complete its mission, but also gave us this. The first photograph ever from the surface of Mars. Skip ahead 21 years to Sojourner. The first successful rover mission. Then there was Spirit and Opportunity. And quick side note on Spirit. Its mission was for about 90 Martian solar days, or about 92 Earth days, but functioned for over six years thanks to cleaning events, winds blowing the Martian dust off of the rover's solar panels. And then Spirit got stuck. But we'll get back to that in a minute. The most recent rover is Curiosity, which instead of being solar powered like Spirit and Opportunity, is powered by a nuclear generator and has more Twitter followers than most humans. Now back to Opportunity. It's been in operation for almost 13 years, about 50 times longer than originally designed. But during that time, the rover has only traveled a distance of 26 miles. It's been said that what a rover could do in six months, a human could do in two hours. What took Opportunity 13 years to accomplish in distance, a human could do in one day. And that's not to discredit what the rovers have been able to accomplish. They've discovered some key ingredients to life on the planet like oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, carbon, and sulfur. And they've measured the radiation on Mars, so when we do send humans, we have a better understanding of the environment we will be entering. But the rovers have just scratched the surface, literally. Spirit got stuck in some soft soil during its mission. In order to get it free, engineers from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory took an identical rover and put it in as close to the same situation as they could, going so far as to recreate the effects of reduced gravity. All this in an attempt to try and solve how to get spirit unstuck. They weren't able to figure out a way, but this highlights an advantage of human versus machine. A human would be able to get itself out of that situation. Not to mention a human wouldn't have to wait 26 minutes to get its next command. Well, it would range between eight minutes and 48 minutes depending on Mars' distance from Earth. It takes anywhere from four minutes to 24 minutes to send a message to Earth in that same amount of time to get it back. And that's the thing, the rovers move by command. They extend their arm by command. Every action is dictated by a person on Earth. So not only is there the time delay between sending and receiving, but also the time to decide the best course of action. You don't have to give a human a command to walk forward 100 centimeters. Humans can be much better robots than a robot. But Jake, you say, you still haven't answered the question of why Mars? Well, good point, so let's break it down, starting with why not another planet? Why not Venus? Venus is closer than Mars at 26 million miles from Earth at its closest point, and 160 million at its furthest. It is also 80% the mass of Earth, and has 90% the gravity versus Mars, which is 10 times smaller, and has 38% the gravity. Venus is often considered to be Earth's twin, but it also has a surface temperature of 864 degrees Fahrenheit, 
hot enough to melt lead, and the surface pressure is 92 bar. To put that into perspective, 92 would be about the same pressure as going a thousand feet deep into the ocean. It would be crushing. Every lander or probe sent to the surface had a fairly short life, with the longest one lasting only two hours before being destroyed by the environment. Now, if you go 31 miles above the surface, it isn't as bad with similar pressure, gravity, and radiation protection, which is why NASA has havoc. The High Altitude Venus Operational Concept, a kind of floating city science lab. But the general consensus is, in terms of planets in our solar system, a lot of them don't have the proper temperature. They're too hot or too cold, they're too far away, or some of them just lack a surface for us to stand on. So in terms of planets in our solar system, Mars becomes the obvious destination. Okay, so we send humans to Mars to conduct experiments much more rapidly and much more impactfully than a rover could. A human could drill into the polar ice caps and find out what the atmosphere was like back when Mars did have liquid water on its surface. We could find out if there was still liquid water under the surface, and in doing so, discover life even on the smallest level. And then this brings up the obvious next question. How do we live there? Since Mars has much less gravity than Earth, your bones and muscles would decay away at a significant rate. So we terraform the planet. Cool terraforming fact. It was generally called planetary engineering up until 1982, when the term terraforming was popularized. There are a few different proposed methods for terraforming Mars. Some involve giant orbital mirrors to warm the surface of the planet. Others include melting the ice caps, directing small asteroids to impact Mars, Basically, we would create global warming on Mars, and it would take a long time. In senior NASA scientist Christopher McKay's paper, Planetary Ecosynthesis on Mars, he suggests that producing an oxygen-rich atmosphere would take more than 100,000 years using current technology. Other researchers have suggested only 500 to 1,000 years, not to mention that terraforming the planet would most likely kill anything currently alive on it. But as astrophysicist Matt O'Dowd told me, who needs to build a sky if you can build a roof. Vast extended covered habitats. And recently, NASA selected six companies to create prototypes. Or maybe the first explorers of Mars live underground. Let me try and answer the question that I first asked. Why Mars? I think it is a bit of a trick question because yes, it is about furthering our understanding of life in our solar system. Is there? Has there been other life besides our own? The significance that that would have and the other mysteries we would uncover would be revolutionary, would be world changing. But when asking ourselves why go to Mars, I think about what Benjamin Franklin said on one of the first manned flights, a hot air balloon ride, when he was asked, why? He said, what use is a newborn baby? It is a beginning. It is the first step that turns into something greater. To go to Mars, it takes all of us from all different countries, from all different backgrounds. It is called the International Space Station, not the American Space Station or the Japanese Space Station. When we come together for a common goal, we can achieve anything. We really can. Even if it's just planting the seed of human life on Mars, no matter how seemingly small, it will grow into something that we could have never imagined. And those branches will extend into the rest of our solar system and into our galaxy and so on and so forth. Going to the moon pumped blood and new enthusiasm for science and engineering and our own world. Think about what stepping foot on another planet would do. As the famous polar explorer Sir Ernest Shackleton said, Optimism is true moral courage. Difficulties are just things to overcome. And as always, thanks, thanks for watching. watching. Hi, I was just shaving my face. Thanks to National Geographic for sponsoring this episode, and to find out how we can make Mars home, I would highly recommend checking out the National Geographic Global Event Series, Mars. Monday, November 14th at 9, 8 central. Excuse me. <laughs>